This is an electric car, and it's 125 years old. Electric transport was invented by whom? Do you know that it was not Nikola Tesla, GM, Toyota, or Elon Musk? In reality, the electric vehicle's golden era occurred before the birth of you and me. What we observe today is more akin to a renaissance period. The true narrative of the electric car is more odd than you may have imagined. Electric vehicles predate gasoline-powered combustion engines. This is the first thing you should be aware of. That is correct. Electric vehicles EVs were the first to be introduced, and for a period, they were the preferred mode of transportation for a wide range of applications including ambulances, milk deliveries, and the ultra-affluent privileged. The beginning of the narrative can be traced back to the early 1800s when the first automotive engineers were able to create the rudimentary prototypes of self-propelled carriages as a result of a series of advancements in battery and motor technology. The authentic inventor of the electric car is a topic of considerable debate, however, we have identified several potential suspects from both the European and American continents. Around 1832, Robert Anderson, a Scottish inventor, was generally recognized as the first to construct an electric horse carriage prototype. He devised a single-use battery cell that utilized crude oil to produce electricity. At that time, the prototype would have been a remarkable demonstration, however, it was not a practical transportation option due to its limited range and disposable battery. We could examine the invention of the first electric locomotive in 1837 by another Scottish engineer, Robert Davidson. His prototype machine was capable of traveling one and a half miles at a speed of four miles per hour and hauling a total of six tons. At this point, the batteries would require replacement. The prototype was still unpractical, but it sufficiently alarmed railway personnel that they burned it to the ground in protest. A blacksmith from Vermont named Thomas Davenport was also a pioneer in the design of electric motors, inventing the first commercially effective motor powered by electromagnets in 1835. Utilizing his motor design, he drove a compact automobile along an electric railway rail. The 1830s designs were all groundbreaking, but they all suffered from the same fatal flaw. The batteries died rapidly and required replacement, rendering them neither economically nor practically viable. The French physicist Gaston Planté would not create the world's first rechargeable battery for an additional 30 years. Elite acid chemistry was employed in this, which is essentially the same battery that is still in use in the majority of vehicles today. Despite the resolution of the battery issue, the first practical electric vehicle EV would not be introduced until 1887. Speaking of which, let us discuss the initial gasoline-powered automobiles. We are aware that in 1886, Gottlieb Daimler and Carl Benz created the world's first combustion engine automobiles in Germany. However, the bourgeoisie of the era did not hold these early internal combustion engine ICE vehicles in high regard. The luxury of an automobile was affordable only to the privileged class, and they were not interested in manually cranking a noisy, stinking, and smoky gasoline engine that necessitated them to transfer gears as they traveled. By contrast, electric vehicles were both elegant and opulent. They could be immediately activated with the flick of a switch, produced no unpleasant noise or pollution, and did not necessitate the driver to shift gears. Furthermore, gasoline-powered vehicles were generally slower than their electric counterparts. Back in 1896, the Electrobat, a motorized carriage, emerged victorious in a series of five-mile sprint competitions, defeating combustion automobiles. All of this led to the rapid adoption of electric vehicles among urban residents, who had convenient access to electricity. Of course, the electrical infrastructure was still unavailable to those residing outside of the city at the turn of the century, which allowed gasoline to establish a foothold in rural markets. However, in the urban environment, the electric vehicle would rapidly surpass the horse-drawn carriage as a mode of transportation for individuals from all backgrounds. In New York City, Henry G. Morris and Pedro Salome, the inventors of the Electrobat, initiated the process of equipping their fleet of electrified hansom cabs. The electric vehicle company was established by Isaac L. Rice, who promptly acquired the partnership. The electric vehicle company had over 600 electric taxi cabs on the streets of New York by the early 1900s, the smaller fleets operating in Boston, Baltimore, and other eastern cities. Rice was able to obtain funding from big money investors. The battery swapping facilities were implemented to alleviate the lengthy recharging time of these early lead acid batteries. The taxi would simply enter a repurposed ice skating rink, exchange its inoperative batteries for a new set, and resume its duties. William McKinley was the first president of the United States to travel in an electric vehicle. Did you know this? At the Pan American Exhibition in Buffalo, New York, on September 6, 1901, he was wounded at the Temple of Music and transported to the hospital in an electric ambulance. Regrettably, he was unable to make it. However, his successor, Theodore Roosevelt, did. Roosevelt was the first president to intentionally and publicly travel in an electric car. 
The brand Columbia named that model in 1902. Thomas Edison was another renowned American who owned an electric vehicle. Here he's being chauffeured in his 1902 Studebaker. Edison and Henry Ford, his former camping companions, once collaborated to develop an electric automobile. Of course, they were correct. They completed at least one prototype before concluding that the gasoline engine had a more promising future. Ford, however, faced an extremely challenging battle. Initially, the Model 2 was priced at $850, which was approximately half the cost of the majority of electric vehicles, when it was released in 1908. The gasoline engine, however, was still labor-intensive, unrefined, and noisy. Even Henry Ford's wife, Clara Ford, favored electric vehicles. She was frequently observed operating Detroit Electric Company vehicles until 1914, and she perceived her husband's product as filthy and raucous. Electric vehicles had undergone an additional battery enhancement from Thomas Edison's nickel-iron-based cells by the mid-1910s, which enabled them to operate for an extended period and recharge at a faster rate. Trendy department stores in New York City have even begun installing EV charging stations to pander to their wealthy female clientele, as electricity is becoming even more abundant. Nevertheless, the existence of the electric car's golden period was to be brief. Ironically, the electric motor itself would be the primary factor in the demise of the electric car. A petroleum engine with an electric starter was first introduced by Cadillac in 1912. Drivers would now merely turn a key, rather than utilizing a mechanical handle to spin start their engines. Combined with the widespread adoption of the muffler, this would introduce a level of refinement to the internal combustion experience that had previously been designated for electric vehicles. Naturally, the price was also a substantial factor. The price of a Ford Model T had decreased to approximately $300 by the early 1920s, whereas the cost of the majority of electric cars had risen to nearly 10 times that amount. $600 was the value of the Edison battery upgrade bundle alone. In the aftermath of World War I and the discovery of oil in Texas, the price of petroleum in the United States experienced a rapid decline. This, in conjunction with the efficacy and speed of Henry Ford's moving assembly line, resulted in gasoline rapidly becoming the preferred fuel of the United States, and the Model 2 was a vehicle that was designed for the masses. Individuals, including those who resided beyond the city's boundaries, where electricity was still scarce. Of course, this does not imply that the electric car was entirely extinct, they persisted in their pursuit of low-speed, short-range applications in urban areas. A fleet of electric milk vans was maintained by the British for domestic delivery, which continued into the 1980s. Throughout the mid-20th century, the production of electric vehicles was inspired by the scarcity of petroleum and oil in Japan following World War II. From time to time, a major automaker would construct a prototype electric car primarily to demonstrate to environmentalists that it was impossible to produce a zero-emissions vehicle at a reasonable cost. The Electrovair, which was derived from a 1966 Chevrolet Corvair, utilized exotic silver-zinc batteries to supply 532 volts to a 115-horsepower AC induction motor. Case in point, this configuration generated equivalent horsepower to the Chevrolet flat-six engine and guaranteed comparable performance for the electrified variant. There were, of course, drawbacks. The car's weight distribution was impacted by the 800 additional pounds of batteries under the hood and the maximum speed was restricted to 80 miles per hour. Additionally, the range was restricted to 40 to 80 miles, which was further exacerbated by the battery's capacity of only 100 charge cycles. Not to mention the expense, $160,000 for the battery pack alone. That figure is also not adjusted for inflation, it was $160,000 in 1966. Would you like it? Tell us in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more interesting and informative videos.